Using my 3D printer, I was able to make all of these metal parts with minimal equipment. All the parts you just saw are made out of a special alloy called Rose's Metal. Rose's Metal is made up of 50% bismuth, 25% tin, and 25% lead. It's special because it melts at around 100 degrees Celsius. While this doesn't make it the ideal option for heat sinks, it does allow the possibility that we could 3D print molds and pour metal right into them. My friend Patrick told me about Rose's Metal and that it has this low melting point. And when I had this idea of 3D printing molds, I immediately tried to see if anyone else had done this. I found a few articles that said it might be possible, but I hadn't seen anyone actually try it. So I figured that I should just do the experiments and I think the best way to do it is just to start trying to do it. So I started off with four small projects. The first one is Imperial Credits. This is a prop from the Star Wars universe. I also wanted to make a chess piece because I thought that'd be a really cool project to do in the future, make a full chess set that I designed myself. I also made a leather stamp because I just wanted to try to make something that was more uh, functional. I also made a lightsaber part because, I don't know, I wanted to. For mold making, uh, working with other STLs, there was a great video I found here on YouTube that was just about how to make molds of STLs. I'll link that in the description. It was super helpful. Biggest tip for mold making, keep it simple. Anytime I tried to do anything fancy, it failed. The first credit mold, the idea was that there was gonna be these pins on the bottom that you'd pour in the metal and then when you flipped it over, you could knock out the piece from the other side and it would be this really slick kind of idea. That didn't work at all. The only thing that did work was I was able to pry out half the piece, but I just used a screwdriver to do that. So on all future things after that, I just decided to maximize being able to pry stuff out. The other fancy thing I tried was for the uh, leather stamp. I tried to do this external registration with threaded pieces that had like these, all the parts would make like one thread that you could put a nut on that would hold it all together. It would have been super cool if it worked. It didn't. On that note of registration marks, add some registration marks. These are, can just be small little pins or references. I did like semispheres. They helped a ton for pouring and just making sure everything was lined up. My next tip is to add little recesses into any multi-part molds you make so that you can separate them once you're trying to remove the piece. This was just little tiny rectangles that I added to the edge of any of the multi-part molds that you see. This allowed me to stick my screwdriver in and twist and pop them apart. It was a super small thing that I added that ended up helping a lot. My final tip is to make the molds thick. I don't think that any part of the mold, even the really thin spots, deformed because of the hot metal, but just having a more substantial mold to pry against, to handle, it was just made the whole thing a lot easier, especially when you're making small parts. Just having a bigger mold just made the whole thing easier. For actually pouring the metal into the molds, this is what I found worked well for me. So I used a cast iron pot and a blowtorch. This might have been overkill. I'm sure you could get away with just using any kind of pot, like go even go to a thrift store and get something there. Uh, the blowtorch was great for melting stuff quickly. You could probably get away with a camping stove if you have one, or uh, if you have an electric burner that you can take outside, or, or even if you have a bonfire or a barbecue would work. I used a bit of graphite powder in the mold before I poured. I can't say for sure, but this felt like it was making a bit of a difference in making the parts easier to remove. As I was pouring, I made sure to tap the mold or the surface uh, of the workbench, just to make sure that no bubbles would form on the surface of the part. Uh, and for the chest piece, I actually made sure to agitate and rotate it around. There's a potential for air bubbles to form, and I just wanted to make sure that they were able to escape. You also probably could design your parts a little bit better than I did to make sure that there was air relief holes. In order to remove your part from the mold, again, I found that using a screwdriver was the best technique that worked. Uh, I tried tapping it with a hammer, but prying and finding something sharp and just getting it to release from the mold made it way easier. My other tip for removal is to let the piece cool down completely. Uh, I live in Canada, so I just left it outside until it was cool to the touch. I found that I can't be sure, 
but I felt like it contracted a little bit and was easier to remove overall. My first tip is to use tin snips to snip off any extra flashing that may have happened, especially for the one part molds. I was able to recover a lot of this material and use it again. The rose metal cleans up really well. I was able to use regular sandpaper and my sanding drum on my Dremel and clean up all the edges and parts that had flashing or whatever. I actually tried to copper plate the Imperial Credit at home following a tutorial I found on YouTube. It did not work for me. I think that I probably made a mistake at some point in the process. I also tried cold casting, uh, which is typically good on for resin. This is where you coat the inside of the mold with metal powder, and it is then captured in the outermost layer. I tried brass powder and it didn't work, probably because of the surface tension of the rose metal, I'm totally guessing, but it did actually create an interesting surface finish where the piece looked really pitted and old, so I did catalog that idea for future use. I couldn't get the cold casting or the copper plating to work, so I just painted the Imperial credits. The Rose's Metal actually took the paint really well. I was surprised, but I think the end result was actually really good. I ended up essentially polishing the pawn and the lightsaber piece. For the pawn, I had made a sprue so that I could chuck it in my drill and move up grits of sandpaper, and then hit it with some brass polish. This worked really well. Both the pawn and the lightsaber had essentially a mirror finish. I put uh, some paint on the lightsaber for the low spots just to create some nice contrast. I will say that the chess piece did lose a bit of its shine once I hit it with the clear coat. In terms of mechanical aspects, the leather stamp worked pretty well. It made a good solid imprint on the leather test that I did. I think that the top wasn't perfectly level so that was causing it to dig in on one side more. For the lightsaber piece, I was able to drill and tap a hole so that it could thread onto the rod. Looking ahead to the future, I definitely have projects planned that use this process, including one coming out next week. In the future, I definitely would like to try the copper plating again. I have some ideas of what might have gone wrong, so definitely want to see if that's possible because I think that would be really awesome. I would also like to try different types of filament. I had PLA and PETG, so I use the PETG because it's a little more heat resistant, but I would be curious to try TPU filament or some sort of other flexible filament to see if that would maybe make some cool flexible molds. I don't know. I also have other ideas for how to use this metal in upcoming projects. Not necessarily making molds with it, but uh, definitely some cool ideas. I'm also curious to hear your ideas. If you have an idea or even an STL that you'd like to see done in this method, please leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, I have other projects coming soon, uh, including one next week that is another metal casting project. Uh, I had a lot of fun making this video. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.